So you're you're on the staff and you're promoted to offensive coordinator, but in essence, you're coming in from the outside, having been the offensive coordinator in Houston. So the Titans sort of get both in you. How much of an advantage is it to you that you had a year to observe, mm-hmm. to see everything, and now you get to sort of institute a lot of what you'd like yeah. to do? Yeah, um, you know, obviously being able to come in and, and – know firsthand personnel wise who does what well um and then the other thing really as far as some of the carryovers being able to see uh what were we affected that what was good you know um what do we want to carry over and then what needs to be adjusted what what do we need to change um you know what things just need to be different so uh you know the thought the hope with that is is that hopefully that that allows the younger players you know especially Traylon chig you know nick malik these guys that that spend time learning the offense that it's just not a complete overhaul just for the 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 sake of change um if it's something that fits and it's something that that we do well and it's effective we're going to keep it the same which should hopefully help the learning curve for those guys does it also give you the ability to understand kind of the dynamics within position groups within the offense as a whole to really have some consistency in terms of keeping some things where you don't want to rock the boat Absolutely. too much. Yeah, no doubt. And I think anytime you can do that while still, again, continuing to, to uh, change, you know, whatever needs to be enhanced, being able to do that and make those adjustments, I, I, I think that helps make that transition smoother. When you talk to Mike Vrabel about this post, about being com- becoming offensive coordinator, what do you think are the most th- important things that you told him that, that made him make that decision in terms of how you'll take the offense forward? Really want to be versatile. Want to find different ways uh, to put different players in certain positions uh, to take advantage of their skill set. So uh, being able to identify what, what people do well and then continually put them in positions to be successful. Uh, and that, that means changing formations, changing personnel groups, changing how fast we play. Uh, those are all things that, that, that come into that. Um, you know, want to make sure that, that on each snap we're for, forcing the defense to defend as much as much grass as possible. So, you know, vertically, the width of the field, all of it. So if, if you know, by stressing the defense, you know, hopefully that gives us more opportunities to, to have big plays, uh, to take advantage of bad football, um, and, and to just be a more explosive offense altogether. As we're continuing through the off season, free agency is looming. The draft is approaching. We're here at the combine right now, so there's so much evaluation going on. How much do you take into consideration maybe some of those strengths and weaknesses within the offense that mm-hmm. you've seen, the roster that you currently have that you're familiar with, and then some areas potentially of need or some areas where you could do some tweaking? How much is that rolling around in your brain as you're continuing through this off season? Yeah, a lot, a lot. I mean. I, I, that's why we're here right everyone everyone's trying to improve and, and uh you know improve their areas of weaknesses and things along those lines so again having that firsthand knowledge of being able to watch development being able to have a, a you know a pretty good projection as to where you see some of the trajectories of these guys going um you know helps with some of that um it, it allows you to know what the limitations are and allows you to know where hey okay this guy may not have done that but I've s- we've seen a skill set and we've been able to identify that that he can check this box so um, you know the more information you can have while trying to build a roster and trying to, to get guys on your team uh, they're going to help you win I, I think the better off you're going to be earlier in this edition of the OTP we talked extensively about the tight ends in this draft mm-hmm. which are pretty impressive mm-hmm. and we talked with coach Mack about you know, the use of tight ends and the growth of tight ends, especially over the last five years, you've certainly spent a lot of time working with tight sure. ends. You've had some good ones. What are you looking for from that particular position in your offense? That spot, obviously you're looking for, for a form of physicality, and, and I, I think that all looks different, um, you know, based upon the, whatever body type you may have. So uh, just because you're not six foot six and, and you know 275 pounds or whatever it may be, doesn't mean you can't be physical in, in your own in your own way. So finding a way to be physical and then finding a way to be versatile. The more you can do, uh, you know, the more you're going to be able to be on the field, and you're more the more you're going to help us win games. So being physical and being versatile, I think, are two things that we really are looking for. Leads me right into a question about Chigakonkwa. Were you pleased? with what you saw from his development throughout the course of the year 
especially from the standpoint of his availability yeah. to play more plays because he knew more. Yeah, he knew more, and, and you know, Chig, Chig did a good job of learning what it takes to be a pro. Um, I, you know, I think oftentimes that's something that we take for granted uh, with guys coming into the NFL and, and learning what it means to play professional football. There's a lot that goes into it, studying, you know, uh, being able to take care of your body, some of the different – uh, just challenges that, that go along with that transition. So he did a good job handling that. And then, um, you know, as far as his development throughout the year, he showed us that, that when the ball would find him, he would make a play. So, you know, the one that comes to mind is, is the ball that he caught here in Indy. Um, you know, the ball found him, he made the play. And so when that starts to happen, you start to feel more and more confident that, hey, if we can get the ball in this guy's hands, you know, something's gonna, something good's going to happen. Um, and the other thing is, is he never blinked. Like we, we would ask him to do some things, and there was never any, huh, and any kickback, anything. He was okay. Here we go. Let's go do it. Um, so again, kind of speaks to his ability to go in there and be versatile and, and fill multiple roles for us. There were a lot of guys who were younger last year and were asked to contribute in big ways as the season went on. Traylon Burks was contributing early. Um, Nicholas Petit Frere is a guy who contributed a lot. Um, how? excited are you about that young talent and the amount of reps even though it was maybe under circumstances that were less than ideal they were able to get a lot of reps they were able to get a lot of that experience so going into year two it's almost like they had an, an accelerated course absolutely and, and and you know as you go back and you watch the season in succession it's it's a uh, uh it's pretty cool to see the improvement that those young players had um each week, as you kind of were talking about, the more and more reps they got, the, the better off they were and the more productive they were. So uh, we're excited there, and, and, and hopefully we can kind of keep them on that track and, and continue to keep them on that trajectory. What do you hope Kyle Phillips can be in the offense? Yeah, Kyle uh, early on definitely showed us that he was a guy who could go and, and you know, get open. Uh, he made some really big plays in that, in that Giants game. You think about the two-minute drive at the end of the game, had a big catch that put us in position to, to kick the field goal. Um, you know, he's a tough matchup inside, and a lot of times, you know, <laughs> when, when you said that, my, my eyes kind of lit up because you sit here and you talk about trailing and you talk about Chig and then all these guys, but Kyle's right up there with him. Um, you know, he's a guy that, that earned our trust early on, um, and, you know, hopefully we, we can get him out on the, on, on the grass a little bit more and, and, and see what he can do, but he's got a unique skill set for us. A lot of young guys, but there's also the potential for some veteran leadership in certain mm -hmm. places. How big of a contributing factor could free agency be in getting some of those veterans into some places where, of course, you want them to perform on the mm -hmm. field, but also helping some of these younger guys kind of learn the way and stay on the path you want them to go down? Sure. Obviously, being able to bring some new guys in to do that, but we've got a lot of good guys in the building already, uh, you know, that... that are good examples for for you know those younger players obviously um so you're always looking to kind of infuse talent and making sure that if you're bringing someone into the building you want them to be the right right type of person um and, and having guys working on different staffs that that may have had some experience with some different players and things along those lines all the information you can gather on them is is you know it only helps in, in that decision making so yeah we're, we're going to continually look to, to bring guys in that that can not only help us on the field but help us in the in the meeting rooms and, and show those younger guys how, what, it, what, what it means to be a pro. Tim Kelly a question we've never had a chance to ask you and that is when you left Houston as offensive coordinator why did you want to join the Titans staff? Obviously being familiar with with coach Rabel uh, in his time in, in, in Houston kind of knew what he stood for um, knew how he operated um, and then having the ability to, to spend a lot of time watching crossover film and, and just and obviously having Dennis and just knowing what what was important to this organization and what was important to his program uh, was always something that that I felt aligned with my beliefs. You know, uh, being physical, being tough, uh, being good situationally, all those different things were, you know, went, what made this uh, uh, move here, you know, pretty easy. Let's ask about Dennis Kelly. Okay. Oh, okay. he's gonna do it. I, well, we love your brother, uh -huh. and he he played for us for five years and uh, did an outstanding job, whatever he was asked to do, but. Mm -hmm. More than that, just a really good guy and and a total culture fit. Sure. I mean, when they traded for him, people gasped because they were trading Doriel Green mm -hmm. Beckham, yeah. and it turns out we got way better in the deal. Um, just just his 
and we always wondered, we talked to him about the relationship with you. Mm-hmm. He said, Mom hopes that uh, H- when you play Houston, Houston scores 80 points, but we score 81. Yeah, uh, yeah he would say that. He was always my mom's favorite anyway. So. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 When my dad was around, I think my dad would have said that, that we scored 81 and he scored 80. But uh, <laughs> no, it, 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 it was always, it was always, uh, it was always really neat to be able just to see how much how much success he had had. Um, that that time we were able to spend on the field pregame and and you know not a whole lot of people get to do that and it was it was always really really unique. Um, then even this year being able to do it a couple times, you know, when he was up in Indy, um, it's just uh, you know it just speaks to the type of person he is, the type of worker he is. Um, and it was it was just always really good to be able to come and see him and, and see how far he's come and, and and for me to tell him how proud you know of him that I am that, that he's been able to accomplish all you know everything that he's accomplished. What a career! Yeah, he's 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 strung some years together. Yeah, now. yeah. yeah. made a couple bucks. That's no a doubt. Good, that's a good thing. All right, let's end it with this, Tim Kelly. Uh, so many people in coaching say their second time around they are so much better, mm-hmm. and it's not that they weren't good their first time around. I mean you. You put up plenty of numbers against us. We know who you are. <laughs> uh, we did the figure. You coached six games against us. One was a game where you didn't play your starters. Mm-hmm. And a- another was a throwaway game, too, because we turned the ball over five times and you just shut it down and won the game because you just didn't turn it over. But the other four games, you averaged 399 against us and 31 points. So we That's know who you good. are. Yeah. We know who you are. But It was always fun to play against you guys. We we, we made sure well, that our guys you, were ready. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We don't want to talk about that. Yeah, anyway, gee, thanks. He, we, we know what you did. <laughs> but <laughs> leading into that, however, I do want to ask the question about the second time around. Where, mm-hmm. where do you feel you will be better as an offensive coordinator doing it for a second time? More confident. Uh, more steadfast, I guess, if you will, in, in your beliefs and how you want things done um, in, in understanding that, you know, your values in terms of your philosophy is your philosophy for a reason um, and making sure that, that you're getting buy-in from, from the people that, that you're working with. And, um, and I would say, you know, I've got a clear vision as to what, I, you know, what we want this thing to look like uh, and, and, and not wavering from that and going in and, and being steadfast in it. Um, and, and, and making sure that we're getting every coach, every player to buy in and, and make sure that, again, when, when, when these games start to count, however many months away it is from now, but that we're out there and, and, and we're, we're able to put points on the board. Well, we expect 399 yards and 31 points a game now, Perfect. Right? I'd be good yeah, with that. Every too. game. Every yeah. game Let's is what we Yeah, that's the expect. standard. I would no. sign up for that. <laughs> Listen, Tim, thank you so much for the time. No excited about you. Excited about this staff that you guys have yeah. put together, which is really outstanding. And uh, looking forward to the Titans' offense in 2023. I appreciate that. Well, thank you for having me on.